Hello and welcome to Risky Business. I hope you enjoyed that little pre-stream. I just had um, some stuff to do in the background. And now, I think we can stream for maybe 30 minutes today. Not a super long stream. Um, so, first of all, what we've got going on is uh, for the tablet, I have um, the pen input working, but I don't have pressure sensitivity right now, and I don't have the eraser working, the eraser button on the little stylus. So uh, I'm going to mess with that some more off stream. Uh, but there's another issue which is, um, it turns out that uh, my graphics card can only support um, driving two monitors at a time. I'm using the old um, GTX 560 Ti, I believe. Uh, let's just double check that. Yeah, we're on, we're using the GTX 560 Ti right now, which sadly cannot drive three monitors at the same time. Uh, so I'm actually going to upgrade my graphics card. I ordered a 750 Ti, uh, which not only will allow me to um, have the uh, screen for the tablet going along with my other two monitors, but um, it supports a newer version of CUDA which isn't rel relevant to the stream, but for my work it is relevant because I do, right now I'm doing uh, deep learning related stuff with TensorFlow. And uh, I can't go too much into what I'm doing for work because I'm under a, a non-disclosure agreement. But um, having that new Arcuda support is the difference between being able to use GPU acceleration for TensorFlow and uh, having to rely on the CPU instead. Because with the 560 Ti, the CUDA version is that it supports is a little bit too low. So I need to use CPU. But anyway, back to um, what we're doing on the stream here. Uh, today, I think what we're going to start on is rather than jumping into um, uh, the uh, Risk Five related stuff. I want to get the tablet all set up and going before we start that. And uh, I also would like to have a good program for drawing as well. Uh, and right now the options are pretty much GIMP and Krita. But I know Mil Milton looks pretty good, and I'd love to be able to support and you know show off handmade software from the community on this stream. So I'm thinking what might be a good uh, project for us right now would be to try to port uh, Milton to Linux. As you know, I did already help a little bit uh, with uh, getting Motionbox going on Linux. Uh, all I did was get the Sky uh, component thing to work or not really work, but uh, I got it to build on Linux. And after that, um, uh, Bungie has been very uh, busy and committed to uh, getting it running on Linux. And as you can see, he has put in quite a lot of amazing work and has it running on Linux now. And so there should be a release of that pretty soon. So I'm very excited about that. I don't know about you guys. Uh, but yeah, so I think we should start on porting Milton. So let's go over to projects here. I haven't looked into Milton at all yet, so I don't know. It sounds like uh, someone has already tried building it on Linux. But uh, there is work that needs to be done.
So here is Milton. It looks like he has a GitHub for it here. Let's take a look at that. All right, and then there's also a comment that he made on the forums that I want to look more into. Um, I'm not sure where that was though. Maybe it was removed? I don't know. I'm pretty sure there was a comment somewhere. <laughs> uh, if you guys want, you can help me look for this. I'm looking for a comment um, that I remember was made. Uh, I made a comment saying that I might uh, want to look into building this on Linux, and he replied that someone had... Um, looked into it a little bit and he had a diff of some changes they had made or something so I wanted to take a look at that um, I thought it was in the Milton 1.2.6 uh, thread They're, I don't know Looks like I disconnected from the chat for a second there. If if you guys found it, I did not receive the message. Yeah, it's definitely not in that topic. It wasn't on GitHub, but that might be relevant, Miblo. I'll take a look. Issue number 20. This does seem to be relevant.
All right. Well, I suppose we should just start um, cloning the repo and uh, trying to build it. Oh, that's probably it, Mimblo. That would explain why I couldn't find it if it's the blog versus the forums. It was probably just a blog comment. Yeah, see, this is the comment I was thinking of that I made. And then this was the response right here. I'm going to throw this in a gist just so that I can um get some syntax highlighting. I want to take a look at this. Hello, William Bundy. I'm going to boost the font just a little bit. Both for the stream's sake and for my own sake. I'm pretty blind, so I usually have to raise the font a bit. <laughs> Thank you for the tip, uh, Kalimian. I never remember uh, browser uh, keyboard shortcuts other than the ones that uh, Vimperator has that I typically use. Oh wow, you're teaching a game design class to kids, William? That is pretty awesome. I hope that goes well for you. As far as I know of, I don't think uh, Vimperator does visual selection like that. If 
we do um, insert, yeah, can, if you do insert and then control A and then uh, control, what was it, C to copy, that would work. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is apply this um, patch and then try to build. So I should probably start off by cloning this All right, and then There we go. Now, how do we uh, apply a get uh, patch? I know there is a um, ability to patch like this. Get AM. Let's take a look at that. Ah, yep. That would be it. Or is it get apply that we want? I think we just want get apply.
Is that not well formed? What is it complaining about here? It says patch fragment without header. I mean, I'm no expert on uh, diff syntax, but it looks okay to me. <laughs> Obviously, it's not, though. Um, Patch fragment without header. You know, actually, I just realized it would help if I was in the right directory. Apparently not. <laughs> I might be able to force it to apply, but I think it probably isn't going to be very hard to figure out what's wrong here and fix it just by editing the patch.
Oh uh, yeah, I see. With the relative path, that's it wouldn't have mattered. So what I'm thinking is we just need um, this type of thing right here. What was that? Uh, Deallocate or something? Okay, well that's interesting. We have a platform Unix, platform and platform Windows. I'm on git version 2.10. I'm not sure what the latest one is. I probably haven't run uh, system updates in, in a while though on this machine. I'll do that after the stream today. So I th I think that um I'm pretty sure that uh we're looking at um platform unix.cc I believe that uh, these 107 and 109 are line numbers, right? And uh, we're looking at um, we have this context here matches at line 102 in platform unix.cc, which is the closest line number to 107 or 109. So we're going to try to patch that into platform unix.cc. So I'm just going to um, copy this little header thing or mabob here and say platform unix.cc
and these look like uh, commit numbers, so I assume those should be the same thing. So do, do you think this looks good, Kalimian? Should I try to patch this? I have I have a feeling that this is what we want, but I'm just guessing here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to patch this again. Corrupt patch. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So something is not right with what we did. <laughs> um. It might be those um, line numbers it's complaining about. That's the best uh, guess that I have as to what could be wrong with this file. So what is the syntax here? Like, I'm assuming that this is a line number, this is like a column number, and same with these two. But uh, what specifically? Yeah, I suppose that might be the best option to just revert the patch, take out that chunk, and then patch it by hand. We don't really need to revert it though because it didn't successfully apply, right? We should just be able to um, take that out and then apply that. Oh yeah, I revert that it's so it wants a blank line like that. Is that what's Yeah. Maybe this patch wasn't the uh, best idea.
and my time is up for the day, but I think we're going to go 30 minutes over since we started late. I'd like to get this, uh, at the very least, I'd like to get this patch sorted out. So, new blank line at end of file. Yeah, we should we should get a uh, inso bot in here. <laughs> So I don't think it's a problem in the patch itself. I think it's more just, well, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say I think it's that there is just a um, new line at the end of the file that it wasn't expecting, but clearly that is not the case. There is a dash dash inaccurate end of file. Well, would you look at that? That sounds exactly like the problem we are having.
So we are going to try... that. Patch does not apply. That's such a helpful error. Isn't that such a helpful error? Patch does not apply. Man, that helps me so much. How about we just patch this by hand? <laughs> I think I think it's time we just uh, forget about trying to do our fancy little patch and just uh, do this the good old fashioned way. So I'm going to open the patch for reference. Let's start with this uh, make file. So let's uncomment it, delete that, it looks like we added a uh, builder. And it looks like, like they got rid of the LD flags. What is um, M? <laughs> Dash L M. Um, I'm curious. I just want to look that up quick. I am not familiar with. M. Oh, maps? Okay. That makes sense. So we're going to comment that out for now. We'll see if it actually needs it. Well, I mean, if it's in here, it probably needs it, right? We can assume that the patch is older than what we're working with here. So we probably do want to link with that. So I'm going to leave that in there. I mean, everything in here is probably what we want, right? It's, it was just commented out because it doesn't properly support Linux. But I, I assume that he's maintaining this because um, in the future when it does support Linux, this is how it will build, right? I think we're just going to ignore um, the patch to the make file for the most part. 
and see what else needs to be done. And then we'll see if it builds. So first I want to take a look at this easy tab. So I think this patch right here is actually needed. I get the feeling that this is from a different file. So anyway, I think we are going to just try building it now and see what happens. Okay, well it says there's supposed to be a header libs implementation file that I am not seeing here. So maybe this is not quite up to date with um, what we actually have here.
So I am going to just get rid of everything we have here because it's obviously wrong. So I'm looking at the patch that we had in my browser and it's building um, three different things under all. It has directories, shader gen, and Milton. So let's take a look at the source here. Do we have a shadergen.cc? Yes, we do. And do we have a Milton Unity build.cc? Yes, we do. And what's the um There was one other. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're basically going, going to go with uh, what, what this uh, make file has. the one from the patch, I mean. I think what I'm going to do, just get rid of all that. put in that and then delete the first uh, column Okay, there we go. Now we have some errors. There's no shaders.gen.h. That is correct. So that's interesting that it is hardware renderer.cc is including a shaders.gen.h, but there is no shaders.gen.h. So, how does this even build? <laughs> like, how does this even build on Windows? Oh yeah, the relative line numbers. Uh, it is kind of weird compared to uh, normal line numbers. For a long time I used uh, normal line numbers. So let me just open up my make file again here. So, um, 
So um, this is why I use relative line numbers. So when you're moving around, I have a tendency to like to just, you know, tap J and K like this. But uh, it's nice to have relative line numbers. So like if I want to jump up to MLT sources, I see right there that it's 17 lines. So I can just do uh, 17 K and bam, I'm there. Right. So it's convenient to have relative line numbers so that you can easily jump around without counting lines. And uh, the one thing that's nice about having normal line numbers is that you can see what line you're on. But if you look down in the, um, let me just make sure it's on stream. Yeah, if you look at um, right here, you'll see that you do still get to see on the bottom what line and what column you're on. So you don't really need line numbers on the left hand side. All you really, it's, it's more useful to you to have relative line numbers. So that's why I use relative line numbers. The more you know. Okay, so um, you're saying it first builds shader gen, runs it, then compiles the rest. That could be indeed. Um, so let's look what else we have going on here. We have a bunch of warnings. Uh, these warnings here suggest that we're not compiling with uh, C++11, but it's using, the code is using C++11. So we're going to um, change that in the make file. Excuse me. Um, we have conversions from string literals to share stars. Uh, I don't know if we're going to mess with that right now. It should be fine. We mainly just want to get this thing compiling so we're more concerned with errors than we are with warnings. So, um, shader gen, I want to look into that more. I'm going to start out by ch checking out this shader gen. Dot cc file. And just I just want to take a look and see what all of this is doing. I think that'll be helpful to know. Because if it generates that header file, that would explain why we don't have that header file. Aha, that is exactly what it's doing. So did that build is the first thing to ask. Did the shader gen build? It did, so we are going to run that, and voila, we now have shaders.gen.h.
So let's run make again. One hundred warnings and one error. So what was the error that we got? Is there a way to um like silence warnings in GCC so we can just see the error. <laughs> yeah, I used to always disable the system bell, but I'm I'm kind of lazy and I just got used to um on my last few machines that I've set up, I just didn't bother disabling the system bell and I'm used to it now. <laughs> I don't really mind it. So But uh, anyway, it looks like we're about done for the day in terms of time. So I'm going to call it for the day. And we will continue investigating the world of compiling Milton on Linux uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday. Um, tomorrow I know I have some stuff arriving. So I might be busy and not uh, streaming. I don't know yet. And Wednesday, I might go into the office um, rather than my home office for work. So I may or may not stream on Wednesday. But... Uh, I will see you in the next episode, whenever that may be. So thank you so much for those of you who watched live. And um, thank you to the people that watch on YouTube, as always. And I will see you next time.